this is going to be one of the messiest projects I've uh, shown on YouTube. Um, and it's all about uh, making LED, custom LED shapes like Christmas lights. So I'll just, I'll show you this one lit up. I'll cover it over so you can see it. And you can see that's a bright orange uh, LED embedded into a three-dimensional resin shape. Now this came about because I got some LED lights off eBay and I thought these were going to be a lot smaller and sort of they were going to be push on rubbery caps, but they turned out to be these massive plastic rose-shaped caps and uh, they were actually just a wee bit too big and clumsy looking. So while looking at the possibility of making a mould to actually um, take an imprint and maybe make a lower uh, thickness one like this, um, I found that you can get this silicon putty. Now, you get this on eBay and it's really expensive. It's really very much aimed at the arts and crafts industry. And unfortunately, I, I got this and you mix equal parts of the yellow and the blue and you use clean fingers to mix them together and they set within about 15, 20 minutes. Except the ones I got didn't set at all. Um, a week later, it's still squishy. Um, and I contacted the seller and they refunded the money because they said they'd had a bad batch. But in the meantime, I discovered you can make your own silicon moulds really cheaply using household materials. And they're flexible, um, very bouncy. I'm just going to drop this and it'll bounce. Oh yes, it's bounced right off, off the shot. And because they're silicon, they work really well with uh, the resin castings. So, to make them, you will need corn flour, or corn starch, as it's known in America, I think. And you will need standard caulking type silicon for um, sealing bathrooms and things like that. This is the clear version. You can use any colour, really. Uh, but it has to be silicon. It can't just be a sort of a filler. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix them together. Now, I found the best way is with a bowl like this and to mix it with a plastic card. This is a card that had a SIM card in it for a mobile phone. So what you do is you squirt the silicon into the corn flour. Now, I did try this with ordinary flour, uh, wheat flour, and it works, but it doesn't produce as good a result um, as the corn flour. So you put in a modest blob. This stuff is cheap. I mean, this this whole syringe here was three pounds, uh, which is about four dollars fifty probably in American currency. Uh, and the corn flour is really cheap as well. And if you're going to handle it, uh, I recommend you m might notice my hands are shiny. It's because I've got moisturizer on them, just because it's to help try and make it easier to clean up afterwards. Because this is quite messy. So the best way to do this is to use the card to scoop some of the corn flour over the silicon and pat it on and then fold the silicon over and just keep layering the corn flour on and folding it. Don't do what I did when I first did it and chop it all up and really mash it because it makes a bit of a mess. You end up with lots of fragments of silicon in amongst the corn flour and uh, it means that it's harder to use the, the same tree of corn flour for the next batch because it's got lots of little bits of hardened silicon in it. So you just keep folding over and uh, layering on the corn flour. And after a point, which I'm nowhere near yet, it will get firm enough to pick out and knead like a, a dough. And the texture you're ultimately looking for is something like plasticine or play-doh. Something that can be moulded and rolled into balls in your hand. So we're getting there. The, court, the wheat flour one I tried didn't work because it made a very sort of... What's the best way to describe it? It made it look like a cookie, a biscuit. Um, it made it sort of look, when the mould was made, it kind of had little stress fractures in it. I mean, it still worked with the silicon, um, or should I say the resin, when it was cast in it. And it still ejected it, and it's still flexible. But I think the corn flour, by default, has a higher resolution, if you will. It's a much finer powder. So this is starting to get to the point. I'm going to lift this out, and it's 
going to make a horrible mess. It's going to end up all over my hands probably. So I'm going to dust my hands with the corn flour, which will stop it sticking. And then I'm going to start kneading this together. And when you think it's just about right, it starts getting really sticky again. So you just have to play it by ear. Um, you'll, you'll get the texture. Play it by ear. It's not even... Play it by feel is a better description. And if you let it get too sticky and you let the corn flour rub off your hands, it will start sticking to your hands. But hey, it'll clean off afterwards. You'll also notice the smell of vinegar if this is the if you're using the uh, acetic acid curing stuff. Actually, there's a wee lump of uh, silicon in that, but not to worry. That must have been in the end of the gun. And the, the acetic acid, it's, you normally get that vinegar smell off the standard silicons because it's just how they cure. And the curing time for this is quite fast. We're talking uh, about an hour or so. I'm gonna, I've got that little pip of silicon. I'm gonna remove that because that's annoying me now. I want that out the way. Yeah, it's better. And this is feeling pretty good so far. So I'll just keep massaging it. Now it's suddenly getting sticky again, so I'll get some more corn flour in my fingers. This bit, I mean, it doesn't take a huge long time, but it um, takes a modest little bit of time. It's almost there. I think the more corn flour you get in, the faster it'll cure. But this is actually feeling pretty good so far. You want it to the point that it's, you know, it's not too sticky because uh, otherwise it will just stick to, stick to your hand and it'll be a wee bit harder to deal with to actually get, do the moulding. That is getting very close. A wee tiny bit more corn flour into it. Quite a nice sensation. It's like soft plasticine. Still a bit sticky, so we have more corn flour still. It's a sort of delicate balance, but it's not hard to find because, as I say, you will notice that the texture should go firmish like plasticine. And the firmer texture is uh, helpful for shaping it into the final um, ball that you'll flatten out and then um, press the object in to be molded. I'm hoping I'm staying in camera for most of this. Yeah, getting there. I think that's just about there. So. Ah, a wee bit more. Sorry. It's just, you know, it, it gets a wee bit kind of sticky. But I think this is more or less it. Also, it makes that nice squeaky sensation you get off uh, corn flour, corn starch. That's a non-Newtonian feel. Right, okay. So here's the ball of dough. I'll put a bit of paper down because this is going to make a bit of a mess otherwise. And I'm going to roll it into a ball. Much like you just roll plasticine into a ball. And then once I've done that, I'm going to splot it down here on the paper and I'm going to press it flat. And that is what we're going to uh, be moulding with. So I'm going to take this existing uh, light cap and I'm going to press it into the dough. I'm going to press it modestly deeply. And you can shape it in round the top if you want it to sort of be a, a re-entrant shape. It's quite malleable. And then you leave it to cure. Resist the temptation to faff about with it. It's better just left on its own. And it should be ready after maybe an hour or two. But um, you can find out by poking it with a screwdriver. Where's a screwdriver? Because if you uh, poke it and it's still soft, it will leave marks in it. But if it's cured, like this one is, when you poke it, it just doesn't leave a mark. It just bounces straight back out. So that's how you know when it's ready. But at the moment, I shall take that and put it down on this conveniently located chair. And I'll clean my hands a little bit and dust off the work surface a bit as well. 
as you can see, I've not got a huge amount in the hands. But it'll clean off quite easily, but yep. Anyway, so here's the mould that I made earlier on, and I'm going to put an LED into it. I'm going to put one of these orange LEDs. Now, the further the LED is back from the front of the resin moulding, um, the more the light will diffuse through. Also, you're better using the flatter LEDs, like what they call the straw hat or 4.8 millimetre LEDs. They're a good choice. So, to make uh, my resin casting, I'm going to use two-part resin, and this is the five-minute stuff. It's supposed to be the five-minute stuff. This stuff is old, and it's certainly taking a lot longer than five minutes to cure, but that's okay, because I've got one I did already. And you squirt a modest quantity into. Uh, this is a plastic shot glass. Uh, I quite like the plastic shot glasses for this because they're, they're disposable and uh, they're, they're just ideal for mixing. And this mixer is a stolen Subway uh, sandwich shop uh, coffee stirrer. They're ideal for uh, this sort of thing because it's a sort of disposable uh, stirrer. You can use it to mix a batch or two of resin and then just chuck it. So I'm going to mix that resin together. This is quite old resin, as I say. Uh, I ran out of the resin, uh, more recent resin. This is stuff that actually I found in the workshop when I moved into this house, so goodness knows how old it is. But it's softening up now. And I'm going to pour it into this mould. Better just poured centrally and left to sort of spread out itself. Don't try and push it too much to the sides. Resin, by its very nature, will flow. Also, don't fill the thing too high because we're going to place the LED across the top. And if it is filled too high, it'll wick onto the leads of the LEDs because we kind of uh, want to be able to fold them back the way again afterwards, back straight. Initially, the LEDs will, leads will be folded um, at about 90 degrees to so it rests across the top of the mould. So, yep, I'll just pad a bit more in, and that will gradually spread as it uh, sits there. Just give it a wee helping hand. Uh, there we go. The LED, we're going to fold the leads at right angles. cornflower all over the leads here and then we're going to place it across so that it just sits into the resin and the resin will sort of wick up around the LED we don't want to wick up around the leads and then we let that cure and here's one I prepared earlier so now one of the other recipes for this suggests putting baby oil into it as well a little splash of baby oil into the the silicon and others suggest adding water. I didn't find those made any difference at all. This one was made with oil and honestly I can't tell the difference between the two. So it's a lot cleaner just to use the silicon and the cornflour. So once it's cured, this one is cured, flex the mould and you'll see it kind of gradually change colour as it pops off the surface and that's it uh, moulded and fold the leads up Oh, I have actually moulded the leads in a wee bit. There we go. I can't remember what colour this one is. I think this one's orange too. Different resin. The other was a standard, sort of a cheapy generic resin out of a dollar store. Oop, just pulled that lead out. And this is the cast LED. Which is a nice diffused effect, actually. I quite like it. So this one will cure in due course, um, and that's more or less it. It's just a really easy way to make these flexible moulds using household materials, just corn flour and standard silicon in a caulking gun. So, yeah, pretty good. I like it.